All right. So here we go. Let's talk about um, minority carrier diffusion capacitance in a PN diode. So in the sequence of things, we have this equivalent circuit model, and we're on the last element in this circuit model. Now, so far we looked at the majority carriers and uh, worried about the response of the majority carriers on this side and on this side of the junction. But we're also injecting carriers in forward bias in this direction here and in this direction here, like what we had sketched before. Now under AC, these carriers might trickle down like this. There is a response on the minority carriers. And they have to be uh, uh, moving through diffusion. So they move in a different way or are um, accelerated in a different way, if you will, uh, than uh, from an electric field, but they're really um, driven by the diffusion of their concentration. So what we're doing now is we're, uh, again, assuming that we have a electron density that is the uh, normal density of states under zero bias, then we apply an electron density that is under DC bias. So that's this excess carrier density that sits up here for P and N. Here in this is written down as N. And then we modulate on top a signal here that we represent as an AC electron density with a complex exponential. And since this is an electrical engineering course, we write this as J. Some physicists would have an I here. All right. Now we write down the same expression again for the diffusion uh, uh, expression for the electrons. We have now written down this multiple times where we calculated an electron density under given circumstances uh, with or without uh, generation recombination. So if you have Rg, this is actually not a straight line, it's more like a, a decaying exponential. We've done this now multiple times. This is the differential expression that we have written in the past, so I'm just citing it here again. Okay, and I'm, all I'm doing is I'm plugging n into this differential equation and I'm identifying a couple of terms. All right, so now I'm going to do the um, differential here. And if I do this, the only time dependence I find in this term, of course, so I, I pull down this guy here and have a JW in front. And I'm uh, expanding the term on the right according to the elements I have in the sum. Okay, So I find the DC component and the AC component. And the AC one is the only one that has uh, e to the JW expression in it. Okay, So the DC component I can pull together like this. And I can obviously solve this again. And if I have a recombination generation term, then in general, I like we, what we have with this uh, tau. So I actually see an exponential decay like this. And um, I can have a, effectively a diffusion length that we had to find. So nothing new here. We have effectively done this before. Now for the AC term, I find something equivalent. I can write down uh, the same type of expression, but except for having a uh, an L, I'm going to label this decay rate an L star, which then turns out to be uh, very similar looking to this guy here, but it's divided by 1 plus J W T N. And so I have a complex minority carrier lifetime, if you will, uh, that looks just like this. It's modulated by 1 over uh, J uh, omega tau. Okay? So, now let's look at the boundary conditions that we have in the system. Again, I, I have the DC expression for the electron density as a function of bias. And I'm going to do the same thing now for the, um, of what I normally would do for uh, the electron density here. And I'm expressing here that I have also an, 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 a delta P AC in the um, 
uh, expression for the holes. Okay? All right. So I'm going to neglect this term here, and I pull out the AC signal with the, like this here in two exponentials. And I'm going to tailor expand this expression uh, with AC uh, bias, okay? Because we, I have this term in the, in the exponent. So I'm going to expand this term here as a Taylor expansion, and I'm going to keep the first order because it's a small signal. All right? So um, now for x equals 0, I have an expression right here that I can determine my boundary condition for the decaying function that we had calculated. So here we go. I'm neglecting the exponentially growing term. I have the expression for the electron density as a function of x due to the AC signal. It decays with this complex diffusion length, and I have the amplitude. So with that, I have all the terms I need to calculate an AC current, because now I can calculate in the diffusion equation the current that is due to the uh, AC changed electron density. Okay, so I just plug this in, and again, I have an, a dependence on the a, um, uh, AC voltage, and I have the, as expected, um, a DC bias in that term. Okay, so that's my AC current, and now what I'm defining is AC current over AC, uh, over AC uh, voltage, and that's an admittance, and I end up with a uh, AC admittance like this, where there's a DC component and there's a uh, complex component in it. Okay, the rest are all terms that are we all very familiar with. All I'm carrying through here are symbols. The essence of the message here is that if we wiggle electrons here, minority electrons here, their change in time on the minority side is determined by the diffusion and the relaxation. And I find the diffusion and the relaxation in L star and in the, uh, the, in the tau, okay? So that is how um, the diffusion piece on that capacitance brings, uh, comes together. Okay, so here they are. There is L, the complex diffusion length, and you have a complex um, minority carrier lifetime that is now frequency de dependent. All right, now we can measure these AC admittance that com uh, consist of two components. We can just take it apart like this, and in general that's this term, and we have to figure out what is the uh, conductance and what is the um, um, the uh, complex part, like this. So we can separate this in, in real and imaginary parts, and you can measure those. And the interesting thing is that for very large frequencies, you're operating on this branch and on this branch. And interestingly enough, these are exactly of the same, same size, okay? So you can separate, after you separate the parts uh, of the imaginary and the um, uh, the real part of this expression, you find that um, for high frequencies, these terms are exactly identical, right? So for high frequencies, this square root dominates, and you end up with an omega tau, and same here with an omega tau, okay? So here again, the conductance as well as the, junk, uh, the diffusion capacitance goes one over, goes as one over omega tau. So they are acting exactly opposite to each other. And the product of them is frequency independent. All right, so we have all the AC circuit elements now. It's really relevant for a lot of uh, analog applications. I mean, you certainly have antennas in your phones, so you will have to uh, pick up signals uh, that are transmitted over air. Um, the small uh, signal parameters always refer to the DC operating conditions. These are nonlinear parameters. Um, they change with the bias condition, so you have to be aware of that. And it's uh, important to distinguish between the majority carrier and the minority carrier 
um, capacitances. And we had identified the physics. The majority carrier respond within the dielectric uh, response time, so virtually instantaneous, versus the minority carriers that are injected across the junction react on uh, diffusion. So their response is much slower. So, so they're lagging behind a, a, a signal. They modify um, the phase of the overall signal in a circuit. So that being said, this is the PN diode AC response. So I thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.